So this job was back in August of 2023, and this is a perfect example of why we do not use knives or other sharp objects to remove ice. This is a service meat case, and I'm sure that when they pierced the copper, it was a, it was a pretty su big surprise to whoever did it. And yet they tell me that they don't know how it happened. Right. So let's go up this ladder here and find out what kind of refrigerant we need. Make sure that that's the right unit. All right, I believe it's this one here. Yeah, if you do the charge on this one, so that's a fairly small receiver. So I think two jugs will be more than enough for it. Uh, what kind of refrigerant were they using? That's the question. You really got to be careful going up and down these ladders, you know. You can fall on some razor wire and really, really screw yourself up for life. unit right here they finally have an excuse to clean it <laughs> so when you're wondering what kind of refrigerant to use the best thing to do is look at the expansion valve my guess would be, looking back on this, that I would have gone in with 407A. So I just kind of popped these up. You can see that there's some weak spots here. They've been hitting it with something. So I'm going to go over that one with a little bit of solder because it's a weak spot. And maybe a little bit right there. But here's the real winner right here. That's really good. This looks like an ice pick. Probably what it was. Got Hit, 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 hit. It's like a dozen hits there. Just got a little, little dab over these, over these weak spots here. I would have recorded me welding it, but the guy was standing right there. So there's really not much else to do in this situation except patch it with some solder. It has to have zero pressure in it, as you should know, to do that. My old gauges. They worked very well for me for a very long time. After about a 30 minute vacuum, and then when there's no change in sound, when you open and close your valves on the gauges, you can take it off the vacuum. And then I always break the vacuum on the liquid side when commissioning an empty system. So what should happen is, I'm gonna, I got some in it now. Now I'm gonna open this one and I should see this one open, rise up. Should see this one rise up as the condenser starts. If it's working. There we go. And then 
sensor is started. Condenser is on. And watch, we'll see it drop out here in a second. Watch. So we're running. See, the suction line has to fill up all of these, and then it has to fill up this coil on top. And it's going to do that for three sections. There's three sections there. Three sections here. This one, where it all comes in and splits. So that's one section. This is our second section right here. And our third section right here. So that was about it that I had for video clips on this one. I was running a pretty high head pressure um, and a liquid line temperature, but that's because it was a real hot day of the year. It was in August. I don't remember exactly what day in August, but it was hot. I know that. Um, so there's really not much I could do about the, the temperature and the pressure. But this condenser, in my opinion, is just a little too small. What do you all think? Having such a small receiver for such a big circuit of evaporators... These, these are gravity units. Notice there's no fans on them. So these rely on having liquid in them um, to primarily cool everything down. So let me know what y'all think of that. And uh, just kind of keep all that in mind if you're working on them. Thanks for watching.